tonight where we sing a, a Christmas song to the tune of Crown Him with Many Crowns. So just a couple quick announcements for the teens. The first one is coming up on January the 8th. We are having our blast rally that will be here from 11 to 1.30 p.m. And the other one is January 20th through 22nd is snow camp. Uh, if you're not signed up to go and are still wanting to go, uh, please see me as soon as uh, you can so we can get um, your, excuse me, so we can get you registered and make sure you have your spot reserved. So that's all my announcements. I'll give it back to Pastor. All right, I apologize for having a cough drop, but otherwise I won't be able to speak this morning. Um, let me just uh, say this. There should, let me give you a couple of announcements that are not in the bulletin, okay? So you need to take note of these. Uh, first of all, somebody has asked about uh, the update on Josie and Ben. Uh, uh, ben was supposed to be preaching at my brother's church this morning in Michigan, and he went out to get in the car, and the car was gone. Uh, so the only car they had, they called the police, and... The police were able to find it. Uh, it, was, it was wrecked. Uh, some guy was running from the police, rolled it over. Uh, so I don't know the damage or anything, but at least they, they, they caught the guy and they found their car. Um, those college families, okay, if we could next week, we'll have a camera here. If we could take your pictures after the morning service next week, if that works. Not going to be here? Let me know. Okay, all right, we'll work something else out. But if you're going to be here, the sooner we get those taken, the sooner we can get stuff sent in so we can get all the, the pictures in the church directory, okay? Um, there's Baptist spread out there at the Welcome Center as well, if you'd like to take one of those. Uh, this morning, Pastor Pendle means to meet with the choir, with the choir, something about this evening service, something came up, so you need to, need to meet with Pastor Pendle just for a few minutes right after the morning service here. Uh, those of you that missed last week, I tell you, I missed a great, uh, great cantata last week in the morning, Christmas program with the kids and teens and the evening service. It was just a great day last Sunday, probably the most people that we've ever had for a service in the morning and in the evening. I think we had probably 150 plus people in the evening. 
Uh, so I'd encourage you to come back tonight with the Christmas candlelight service. You, you will enjoy it. The panels are usually put that on. They have several people in church are involved, and they do a good job. I'd encourage you to be back tonight, 5 o'clock for that. But if you'd like to hear some extra Christmas music, they'll be starting that about 20 minutes till 5 this evening, okay? Those that are in, in the Faith Bible Institute, if you'd like to get your books and stuff this morning, please see Misty after the morning service, and she'll get you all your materials for the next semester. We will not have Sunday school next week, December the 26th. We'll have morning service and evening service, but no Sunday school. Uh, but speaking of Sunday school, the, January the 2nd, we start our new Sunday school classes in the auditorium. We'll be Pleasing God by Todd Wallsmith. And then in the uh, fellowship hall will be the Christian home with Brother Joe Maxwell. That starts the first Sunday in January. Those that are in uh, Brother Todd Walsmith's regular son, the young adults, uh, I'll be teaching that class for January through March, okay? December the 19th, okay, we just talked about that. Uh, oh, sorry, no, December 19th. Today, that's today. Sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I told you I'm sick, okay? I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth during the morning service, okay? I, I, I hope it's not Dr. Seuss, okay? But we'll do the best we can. <laughs> Those that are normally in Todd's class, you are having lunch this morning after the morning service with Todd and Lynn, okay? December 21st, so this Tuesday, will be our midweek service rather than Wednesday. Tuesday at 6 o'clock will be our midweek service. And then uh, you see all the other things that are in their Christmas card box. Don't forget to check the Christmas card box uh, out there in the coat room. It, more than welcome to, oh, my wife's what, flagging me down. Oh, well, why can't we all have a Christmas party? <laughs> Maybe we can work on that, adults, okay, all right? So, uh, so kids, yes, kids program, they're having a Christmas party on that Tuesday night. Don't forget about the Christmas card box. Make sure you check to see if you have a card out there. Um, again, try to do that. We'll give you to the first week in January before I have to start throwing them out. Okay, I hate to waste somebody's Christmas card, okay? Uh, but if you'll do that. Oh, one other thing. Uh, deacons, I need to meet with you this morning. We have a, a family that would like to join the church. So if we could do that right after the morning service this morning, that would be appreciated, okay? All right, if we'll go ahead and get the ushers to come, we'll take up the morning offering. Ask Brother John Snyder if he'd pray for the offering, please. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy, Lord. And thank you that we're able to assemble together as brothers and sisters in Christ today, Lord, and, and to celebrate uh, your son coming into the world, Lord. And thank you that he came into the world, Lord, uh, uh, seeking to save sinners, Lord. And we're thankful for your word, and we ask that... Uh, that you give the pastor the words to speak today, Father, and thank you for the word that it uh, changes hearts and changes lives, Lord. Uh, please bless, bless the offering today, Father, and help help us, Lord, that it would be used to further your kingdom, Lord. And all these things we pray in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.
Miss Pendle for that. There's a song in the air. We're going to be singing four verses of this song. There's a song in the air, and there's a star. There's three on this one? No, we sang four in the last one. That's right. Okay. Make sure I'm the same page. Three on this one. There's a song in the singing if you're able to stand join me in standing as we sing oh holy night there's a little bit of an interlude so just watch as we sing oh holy night the stars are brightly shining oh holy night the stars are brightly shining Grateful chorus. 
Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. When you're sick, it affects everything, okay? All right, if you were four years old through the sixth grade. Four years old through the sixth grade. Appreciate, uh, again, Joe and Michelle singing that hymn. That'll be our focus, I trust, next week with the story of Jesus. We started last week looking at Joseph. Of all the people God could choose, uh, why did he choose Joseph and why did he choose Mary? And we, we looked at last week looking at Joseph, and one of the things I believe that God chose Joseph because he was a just man. We looked at that last week. And this week we're going to look at uh, a little bit at Mary. It seems to be maybe perhaps a little bit harder to figure that out. I, I say that, but you'll see here it's the actions of Mary that I believe why God chose her. Uh, I'd like to read all the verses, but I just can't do that all at one time. So let's just look at Luke chapter 1 this morning. Luke chapter 1, we'll begin with verse number 26. Luke chapter 1. I'm glad I can wait a minute for you to find it. That way my, <coughs> my throat can suck on a cough drop a little bit longer, okay? Luke chapter 1, let's read verse 26 down through verse 30 to begin with this morning. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, 
of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. Uh, excuse me, highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutations this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Now, again, obviously we're talking about Mary, and we know that uh, uh, Mary, what, what an honor it was to be uh, Jesus' mother. Okay, there's no doubt about that. But as we go through things here, look, remember, we're looking at what the Bible says, and perhaps uh, uh, I trust you'll look at things from the Bible perspective and not necessarily what you may have been taught through the years or tradition and things such as that. But we see here the announcement was an angel Gabriel. Isn't that interesting? Uh, we hear about angel of the Lord and other angels, but you know what? Very seldom do you have an angel's name mentioned, and here we have the angel Gabriel. Sent by God, it tells us in verse number 26, to give the news to Mary. Another interesting thing here we see in verse number 27, he's coming to give this message to a specific person. Okay? Look again at verse number 27. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. See, not all the women met the qualifications of the mother of Jesus. So already we're, we shrunk down a pool of, I don't know how many ever women there was in the world, uh, but there was a pool there and a specific person, one who was of the house of David. Okay, so that limits the number of ladies that could be. But notice the other thing we see here about this uh, message that Gabriel brought. It was a message of rejoicing. Look at verse 28. And the angel came into her and said, Hail. The idea of rejoice. Mary, you need to rejoice because of what's about to take place. You have been chosen. Now again, think about this from men that we've seen throughout the scriptures who were chosen. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 8, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Moses in Exodus chapter 33 verse 17, and the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken of, for thou hast found grace. Grace in my sight. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. I have found. Again, yes, uh, Mary was a person who was doing things, again, that God noticed and God took notice of, just as he did. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Thank you. Just as he did Noah and Moses and David. Now we find here in, in, in Mary herself. I'll do my best to get through, okay? <clears throat> it's worse than I thought this morning, okay? But a time of rejoicing. Now again, first of all, an angel comes. That's got to catch you off guard. And I think that did catch Mary off guard a little bit, Okay? And then it's the, marriage, uh, it's the idea of you can rejoice. And notice the interesting thing we see here in verse number, uh, where am I at? To verse number 30. And the angel said to her, fear not. I think that was part of the, the cantata last week when the, when the angel was reading. Uh, how oftentimes we associate that with a message of fear not. Well, obviously, you know, if you were to know you're talking to an angel, there'd be some fear there. A reverence of fear. And that was Mary, and, and Gabriel was trying to calm her. But I want you to notice something about this message of rejoicing also. But it's, it, it was not a moment of reverence or a moment of worship. Okay? Now that's important. Look at verse number 28 again. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, what's the next word? Among women. Not above women, but among women. The angel Gabriel came down not to worship Mary. We need to remember that. Again, what a, what a great honor it was for Mary to be chosen by God to carry the Redeemer. But you know what? She was still a woman, not a perfect woman. 
Just as Moses and, and, and Noah and David, none of those people that God has ever chosen have been perfect. But yet God used them. And God used the faithful people. And Mary was one of those. And the angel says, thou art highly favored. Blessed art thou among women. Because, again, I believe the life that she lived. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 7, it says this. Saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. Who are we to worship? God. Not any other man or woman. It is God and God alone that we are to worship. Do we go around and worship Noah? Do we worship Moses? Do we worship David? Do we worship the Apostle Paul? We are not to worship anybody other than God himself. Then in verses 29 and 30, we see, again, because it says in verse 29, And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Again, I believe Gabriel is bringing uh, uh, to Mary assurance. Assurance. Look, the Lord is with you, it tells her in verse number 28. Remember, she's thinking in her mind, okay, wait a minute, what's going on here? I know that God can do anything. Remember, Mary is well aware, well aware that the Messiah would come one day. She, she, she knew that, okay? But again, in all honesty, I think the humility we see in, in, in Mary is this. Well, it certainly can't be me. And that's probably one of the reasons why God chose her. Let's think about it. I mean, there's not a woman on the face of the planet who wouldn't have loved to have been Jesus' mother. But you know what? Not every woman could handle that. The other things that come with it, but much less the humility factor. I mean, think about how prideful of people we truly are. Could you imagine you being the mother of Jesus? Wouldn't you be telling everybody who you were? Yeah. It's just reality. Right. But that wasn't Mary. We don't see that anywhere when we read about the things of Mary, that she was a proudful woman. Right. And, and, and here, Gabriel is trying to assure her and tells her, look, the Lord is with thee. Boy, don't we need that? Amen. I mean, I'm telling you, every, every single day, uh, and I don't know if it's just God working in my own heart and life, but when I'm praying, and I'm reminded of that very fact, we need the Lord. Amen. I don't care what's going on through the day. I don't even know what's going to happen in the day, and neither do you. But you know what? I know I need the Lord. Amen. And for you and I to get up in the morning and go about our business with no thought of needing the Lord, boy, we're in trouble. You need the Lord. I don't care how faithful a person you are or not. You still need the Lord. Notice as he continues out this assurance in verses 31 through 33, it says this. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and the kingdom there shall be no end. Again, he's, he's reminding her. Remember, Mary knows, but he's reminding her of what? Of prophecy. He's reminding her. Look, you've been taught this. We know, and all the children of Israel, the Hebrews, they knew that one day a Messiah would come, and he'd be born of a virgin. They all knew that. And Gabriel is reminding Mary of that very thing. She needs to be assured that what she is being taught or what she's being told is truly going to come to pass. And it's nothing more than something that she already knew she needs to be reminded that it's fulfilled prophecy. Somebody gave me this this morning. It's called the Twas the Night Jesus Came. So I'd like to read that to you. As we think about prophecy, you can go back and look in the scriptures how that, Jesus, uh, that, that God prophesied. It goes clear back to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15 where it talks about the, we had the first uh, prophecy of the fact that Jesus would be born of a virgin. Okay, uh, He'd be born to come and to conquer sin and death. Okay, Prophecy. What do we know about prophecy? It was fulfilled. Amen. And what do you need to know about prophecy? All prophecy will be fulfilled. If it hasn't been fulfilled yet, it will be fulfilled because God always keeps his word. It says, "'Twas the night Jesus came and all through the house. Not a person was praying, not one in the house. 
The Bibles were left on the shelf without care, for no one thought that Jesus would come there. The children were dressing to, to crawl into bed, not once ever kneeling or bowing ahead. And Mom in a rocker with baby in her lap was watching the late show while I took a nap. When out of the east there rose such a clatter, I sprang to my feet to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and lifted the sash. When what to my wondering eyes should appear, but angels proclaiming that Jesus was here. The light of his face made, my, made me cover my head. It was Jesus returning, just as he said. And though I possessed worldly wisdom and wealth, I cried when I saw him in spite of myself. In the book of life, which he held in his hand, was written the name of every saved man. He spoke not a word as he searched for my name. When he said, it, it's not here, my head hung in shame. The people whose names had been written with love, he gathered to take to his Father above. But those who were ready, to, were ready, he rose without a sound, while all the rest were left standing around. I fell to my knees, but it was too late. I had waited too long and thus sealed my fate. I stood and I cried as they rose out of sight. Oh, if only I'd known that this was the night. In the words of this poem, the meaning is clear. The coming of Jesus is now drawing near. There's only one life, and when comes the last call, we'll find that the Bible was true after all. And reality is, God's Word does tell us that Jesus will rapture the church. There will be a second coming of Christ. And here's the thing, are you ready? All around us, people are talking about what's going on in the world. It's just prophecy being fulfilled. Jesus is rapturing the church away is just around the corner. I don't know when that'll be. But I'm telling you, the things that we're seeing take place makes it seem like it could be today. Amen. It could be tomorrow. Amen. It could be before the week's over. Are you ready? I know it's just a track, but real food for thought. Yeah. Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Because when Christ raptures the church out, it'll only be those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. He's reminding her of prophecy, but he's also reminding her of God's power. Verse 35 says this, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she had also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Gabriel Angel, again, is assuring Mary of the prophecy that's going to be filled and the power of God. You know your cousin Elizabeth, who can't have children. She is now six months along. Yes, even in her old age, she is about to bear a child. Why? Because nothing with God is impossible. Yes, we know, we understand here that you know what? This is going to be a miracle of God. You will not be able to comprehend it. You will not be able to understand it. But it's the power of God that can take somebody like Mary and allow her to carry the Savior. Notice some of the actions we find of Mary. Verse number 34, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Again, one of the qualifications, it couldn't just be any woman. It had to be a woman who was morally pure. Amen. And again, we live in a society today where that's hard to find. And again, you know the coming of Jesus the first time was all in God's plan, all in God's timing. Could you imagine if, if Jesus were to come today to, to be born of a virgin? That would be probably a tough call to find, wouldn't it? We live in such an immoral world. And yes, parents, I hate to say, you got a tough job ahead of you. It is important for you to keep your children. And by the way, it doesn't matter if it's a girl or if it's a boy. They still need to be morally pure until God brings that right person along. And they are what? Married. Not engaged. Not a week before. Not the day before. But until you're married. You need to keep yourself morally pure. That's God's plan. 
We live in a world again today where it seems that they're pushing it. It doesn't matter if you sleep around. Yes, it does. It matters to God. And when God was looking, he was looking for somebody who was morally pure. But notice something else we see in verse number 46. And Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord. Again, Mary is just an incredible lady. We look at all out of pattern in our life after Mary. What does she do? My soul doth magnify the Lord, doth lift up the name of God. Is that not what we long to do every Sunday when we come here? To magnify, to show forth the name of God? But what about every day of our life? That is Mary. Notice also we see in verse 47, And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. Whoa. Perhaps you need to go back and read that one more time. It says, And my spirit hath rejoiced. In who? In God. Who? My Savior. Mary. Morally pure, holy lady, faithful lady, understood the same fact that every person must understand, and that is Jesus Christ is the Savior. It wasn't Mary saying, looking to me, I am the Savior. She says, my God, my Savior. I am, I have the privilege to carry the Messiah. Notice verse 38. And again, this is, again, some of the other things that I think I see why Mary was chosen, her action, but, but her attitude. And verse 38 describes Mary's attitude so well. So much we can learn from Mary here. Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. The handmaid of the Lord. Again, now, you're talking about somebody who was, who was about to, to, be, uh, uh, to ha- have a miraculous conception and carrying the Messiah, and she calls herself what, a servant of the Lord. How many of us think of ourselves as a servant of the Lord? Most of us don't even want to consider ourselves a servant, period. I'm not humbling myself to serve anybody, Okay? If that's your attitude, I'm telling you, it's not the attitude of Christ. It certainly wasn't the attitude of Mary. I'm the Lord's servant. Think about people we we read about in scriptures who that describes. Moses, the servant of the Lord. Paul, the servant of the Lord. Peter, the servant of the Lord. James, the servant of the Lord. Jude, the servant of the Lord. Christ himself humbled himself and became a servant. You wonder why Mary was chosen? Not because of her action, but notice her attitude. I'm just a servant. That's humility. Humility. I'm just a handmaid of the Lord. But it goes on there, and it says this. Be it unto me according to thy word. She submits herself unto the Lord. Look, whatever you say, God, I'm okay with that. Wow. Those were big statements. That was a big statement to make for some woman who's not yet married. Yeah, she's engaged. She's promised to Joseph. Oh, we could talk about the Jewish custom. It's it's like being married. But the point is still this. Okay? She submitted to whatever God had to say. She accepted God's will. It says in verse 38 there, Be it unto me. Be it unto me, no matter the consequences. Now, again, think about this. She's promised to Joseph. She has been for, for, for what, uh, three months at her cousin Elizabeth's house. Elizabeth's about to give birth, so she heads back home to face who? To face Joseph. Whatever you want, God, I accept it as your will. Maybe Joseph would leave her. Maybe Joseph would put her away. And we read that. We looked at that. But Joseph being a just man who loved Mary, didn't want to do, didn't, wasn't one to put her away publicly, was thinking about putting her away privately. But the angel came up to Joseph as well. But, but Mary didn't know that at the time. She's making a trek back home. What am I going to say? And again, Joseph knew just as well that Mary knew about the prophecy. 
Okay, he knew that. But again, just think about it for one moment. Do you really think all along Mary's thinking about, he's not going to believe me, he's not going to believe me. Would you believe her? Knowing the prophecy has not yet been fulfilled. But again, God knew that, and God knew. And that's why he chose Joseph and Mary. He spoke to Joseph, and Joseph knew that. Mary didn't know that at the time. But she had to think about that. What if he doesn't want me anymore? No matter the cost. Again, we may think it as common, ordinary place today to see some high school girl pregnant. But not in this day. Think about, remember, Mary was what? A servant of the Lord. She gave God glory. She lived for God. And now she has to face criticism. All the comments made about her, she walked by. I thought she was supposed to be getting married to Joseph. Look at her. She's three months along already. Having to live with that. Oh, yes, and they can be telling people. Well, it's the Messiah. Like, right, sure it is. That's what I tell Joseph to if I were you. Okay. I mean, it's, it's, think about it. Do you want to be that girl that has to go through that? Again, why did God choose Mary and Joseph? Because most people couldn't have dealt with that. It just really is. We can say it because we read about it. We know that it's Jesus. But you and Mary, Mary didn't know that at the time. She's taken the angel's word for it. He proved that to her. But she had to deal with the consequences and all that it cost. Humiliation. Does anybody like to be made fun of, laughed at, mocked? Nobody here likes that. Mary and Joseph had to go through some of those things. Mary's actions and attitude is what set her apart from all the other women. It's not that she was perfect. It's not that she was better. But you know what? God saw in her the way he saw in Noah, the way he saw in Moses, the way he saw in David, somebody who loved the Lord. That's what he saw. And that's the life that Mary lived. What about you? What about me? Are we ready? As we read that track, are you ready for Jesus returning? Amen. Do you understand the love that Joseph had for Mary? And we are to love one another like that? Love our neighbor as ourself? Brother Don was talking about that a little bit in Sunday school. You know, we know the two commandments, don't we? Love the Lord God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love thy neighbor as thyself. But reality is this, are we doing that? Are we practicing that on a regular basis? Not just once a day, once a week, once a month, whatever it may be. God loves you. He chose Mary and Joseph to be the mother and to be the stepfather of Joseph or of Jesus. Jesus came. Because he loved you and I, he came to be born, he came to go to the cross, that he might pay for your sin and for my sin. And Lord willing, we'll look at the life of Jesus Amen. next week. Why don't we go stand? We'll have a word of prayer.